encourage people at home to uh, be honest with themselves because I also feel like you know social media and the media they they kind of make it seem like like it's wrong to to admire Trump or want to support Trump um, and I, I would say there's nothing wrong with it if you're team Trump be tree team Trump don't let anyone tell you otherwise or feel like you have to um, you know not support him in public because I, I know a lot of people do that like even where I'm from they they're afraid to say that that they stand with Trump and I and I don't understand why and I don't want to start speculating on, on why that might be but I think if they see the amount of people um, that turned out and the different ethnic group the different type of people that that they would see that it's okay to, to love Trump. It's okay to, to um, it's okay to vote for Trump. <laughs> I have uh, a very simple question. Why'd you come out today? <laughs> I came out to support Donald Trump because I want to make America great again, because I'm sick and tired of the things that are going on in this country, especially with the corrupt media. Like what? <laughs> like what? Yeah. Well, the fact that they hide the truth from the American public, um, the fact that they they lie through their teeth. The fact that they don't ask the right questions to to the uh, candidates that are on the right side of the fence, and I know you know what I mean. And um, I don't like I don't like the way the Democratic Party doesn't support police officers, doesn't doesn't support uh, our our border wall. Uh, how am I doing so far? It's pretty good. You got anything to say? Yeah, I'm supporting Trump because I enjoyed the first term he served. And the alternative is a march toward Marxism. We don't need that in this country. Why, why do you, can, can you talk about that a little more? Why do you think it's a march towards Marxism? Because everything that Kamala Harris stands for is leading us towards Marxism, whether it's open borders, whether it's trying to take over the entire health care system by the government in this country. It's not a good situation. We're a democracy, and we should remain a democracy. And she is a danger to democracy. And to add to that, Kamala Harris is, is known to be a, a full-time member of the Communist Party in America, as well as the Socialist Party in America. How, uh, the Communist seen, Party? The, like yeah, a, like no, the a Communist formal Party in the communist United party? States. There is a formal Communist Party in the United States. And I've seen pictures of her identification badge with her face and her name and underneath the Communist Party of America. It's from a long time ago, but that's her roots. Do you, uh, you know, some people would say, well, it's probably like a fake or... Well, some people might say it, but I also look at the, I also look at the, her record uh, as a, uh, as a prosecutor, her record, what she did when she released uh, the uh, um, felons. And I won't even use the term illegal immigrants because I don't really like that term. I, the, but the people are here illegally, okay? And, but, you know, and she, and she gives amnesty not for not for citizenship but amnesty and freedom to these people to be released despite their despite their uh, um, crimes that they've committed and she believes in no bail which is why people can come to your house after they robbed it then come back to you after they released on bail and kill you and I'm, I'm kind of not in favor of that do you, do you know a lot of people who are voting for Kamala or who are undecided? I don't know a lot of people that are undecided. I do know a lot of people that are voting for Kamala. And uh, it, with, with all due respect to people's right to do whatever they want, I won't use the terminology that I really feel about the people that are going to vote for Kamala. Is you, have you been successful in making any argument to them about why they should change their mind? I'm not going to pretend that I go out of my way to argue with people who, who um, don't want to hear what I have to say. If, you, know, you know, people that are convinced to do what they want to do, they're going to do what they want to do. And they don't want to hear from Bob, no matter what. But what's the, if, if you could make one argument to them, what would it be? If I could make one argument to them? Yeah. Why they Don't should be vote for Trump? Come get a MAGA hat. The, the four years that we, we uh, that Trump was in office, we had a fantastic economy. Okay, it was the lowest amount of unemployment in the history of the country. Um, we had our own energy. We weren't buying energy from corrupt countries like Venezuela. We weren't giving money to corrupt countries like Iran or Iraq. I'm not sure which one. 
and our country was safer. We didn't have any wars, and I don't know that I don't know the how many soldiers were killed in action during the Trump four-year era, but I'm pretty sure it was zero. And, and that's not to, that's not uh, to forget the 13 soldiers that were killed on the debacle release from Afghanistan. So I would bring those things up to the majority, uh, to the people that might want to might want to listen to me. But honestly, there's few people that will will even want to hear what I say. Some of the people even in my own family. So if you're watching this family, shame, shame. All right, any last thing you want to say to New Yorkers or the media? <laughs> well, I mean, I think I pretty much said it all, but uh, I would say that if you uh, care about this country and you want this country to survive and prosper, you need to vote for Donald Trump. All right, thank you. And not for Kamala Harris, AKA Comrade Kamala. And there's a reason they, they call her that. Tell us why you came out tonight. I event. came because I live nearby and um, I wanted to show my support and I wanted to be around large amounts of people who feel the same way as I do. What do you want to see him do? What are the main things? I like the truth and I like to have, I would love to have the things that are very wrong in this country right now, the corruption, the lying. I would love to have them exposed and I would love to start from scratch with a whole bunch of uh, new bureaucrats that are running our country that are not put in by severe leftists whose policies are getting more and more left and more and more absurd, frankly. It's scary. I have 13 grandchildren and I worry about what kind of society they're going to uh, grow up in. So why did you come out today? I came out here because I did not want to go to work, uh, because I'm starting my own media network, and um, I just really needed a day off. That's why I came out. So, just for kicks? For kicks, yep. I'm, I mean, I support uh, the former president, huge advocate. I work in journalism myself, um, but mainly I didn't need to be here, I just kind of wanted to be. It's more of a, it's more of a personal thing today than business. You're supporting Trump. Yep, because he has the biggest tent. He's welcoming the most amount of people into this party. I mean, look at it. You know, Kamala Harris accepted the endorsement of over 200 neocons. Okay, these are warmongering people historically. Dick Cheney. All right, well, look at who we got. We have Elon Musk. We have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. We have Tulsi Gabbard. We have the pro free speech and the anti war people on our side. So, who's really America first? You know, she acts like it's some massive endorsement for Dick Cheney to endorse her, but it just shows that the Democratic Party is the party of corporatism and forever wars. So I'm going to stick with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, and all the other anti-war people while the warmongers have fun with Kamala Harris and get her elected. What, what, do you, what do you want Trump to do when he, if he gets into office? What do you want him to do first? Well, I want him to take care of immigration. That's the first priority. But the second priority is addressing the chronic disease epidemic in this country. I'm looking forward to the work he's going to do with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on that. Um, and predominantly, those are my, my two biggest issues. Of, were, of the campaign. Were you a Trump supporter first or an RFK Jr. supporter first? I supported Trump in 2016. I supported Trump in 2020. I think RFK coming into the race raised a lot of important questions. I support a lot of his policies. I consider myself somewhat classically liberal, especially on free speech and, and, and uh, foreign, foreign war and foreign policy. Um, but I am conservative on a lot of issues. So definitely supported Trump 2016, 2020. RFK raised a lot of important issues. He's only going to make Trump stronger now that he's all endured. Why did you come out today? Because I support President Trump and mostly because the economy stinks, because illegal immigration is terrible, and we have to have law and order in this country or else it's not a country. Have you been to other Trump rallies? No. So this is the first one. First rally, but uh, I believe in him, and I even met him once. So he's uh, he's genuine. He's not perfect, but he's much better than what everyone else 
would make him out to me. Mm -hmm. Did you jump? Did you vote for him before, or is it your first time voting? For him? I voted for him both times. He won in 16. He probably won in 20. But he's better going to. He's definitely going to win in 24. I think they're all worried. That's why they want to do everything to put him in jail or kill him. Because that's the only way they're going to stop him from winning. What do you say to people who are voting the other way or who are undecided? Tell, tell them, look at their bank accounts, look at their, look at all their investments, look at everything that's happening in the country. Look at all the people that are getting killed in this country or, or injured from illegal immigrants. Illegal immigrants. They're not people who just came in here. They're letting them in and they're going to every single little town in this country and you don't realize it, but you're in danger. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Diana. The reason I come to uh, Trump rally today because the uh, Biden's administration is let a lot of uh, illegal immigrants use our benefit. It's unfair. That's why I come out today. I hope he can win. Thank you. Okay. Is that so? Is that's that's really the See main. See from the Taiwan. Ah, if Trump okay. win, better for Taiwan. Yeah. Okay. I come from uh, China, but I live in America 16 years. I know American, you know, the policy. If the Trump win, I hope uh, future is good relationship with China. Uh, since he is the businessman, the future world we can do the business. It's good for the uh, uh, citizen. Thank you. My name is Susan. Okay. Uh, I came out here to observe more importantly than anything. Observe. See what's going on. Do you are do you live in Long Island or are you? Yes, I'm okay. in Hempstead. So you so you just thought you would come, come out by, and yeah. see literally what's going walking on? distance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. Um, are, do you support a political candidate? Uh, I wouldn't use the word support, um, but I'm here to support love and unity more. Um, I'm not into the left wing, right wing, because to me it seems like it's the same bird, it's the same direction they're all heading in. Um, so we had the same war on everything before my time. The war on drugs, the war on crime, the war on poverty. We had these wars before my time and it still has, nothing has changed. So uh, my generation, well me, I'll speak for myself, I'm just here to observe. You sound like an independent voter. Yes. Okay. So are you leaning one way or another? No, I, um, no. Like I said, I pay my own taxes. I, I, I work as an independent contractor. Um, so, you, so, so you still have an open mind and you're one of those people who could still be convinced one way or another? Yes. Well, I'm leaning to, <laughs> uh, if, if I would lean towards um, a party would be Trump, to be honest with you. Uh, sad to say that, but I would lean towards Trump. Why? Um, because he, he's not fake. He's not um, he's not trying to be something he's not. Like uh, Camilla, she came out, she was wearing those Tims. Um, she's always trying to be like uh, culturally uh, appropriate. She's always trying to push off like an agenda, like she's black or she's this or she's for the urban people. When Trump is saying, hey, I'm for everyone. You know what I mean? Um, it's, 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 it's about everyone. It's about unity. To me, it's about unity. Um, it's not about classification anymore. So, what, what are the top issues for you? Like, what would uh, what would clinch it for you um, in terms of politicians addressing the, the top three important issues for you? Poverty. Poverty is one. Um, I think we forgot the number one war we've been fighting from before our time is the war on poverty. The war on poverty is a major, major issue. Uh, there's a lot of kids that's hungry in, in many different countries. I wouldn't just name out one, but there are many starving families that need homes, need roofs, need uh, school books, book bags, school shoes, things we're overlooking. Um, things to me that's salient, that's emotionally salient to me is uh, poverty, poor people, uh, they get me more emotional. Watching people that's poor, uh, families, broken homes uh, because of poverty, that's, that gets me the most is poverty. Uh, the war on drugs, obviously, the, you know, it's a bigger 
it's a big it's a bigger picture there um, when you talk about drugs because uh, it's not just uh, one person bringing it in. It has to uh, cross somewhere, so someone is overlooking it. So when it comes to the war on drugs, I step back because uh, we all know it's a game. But the war on poverty is affecting us all. All right, have you been to a Trump rally before? Um, no, this is my first. One. What's your impression? Um, to me, uh, uh, it's, it, to me, I see what one man can do as far as have power. Uh, he had. Uh, Let's say, what time, it's, it's, it's 6.30, he's still on the way here, and all these people were here since this morning. So to see one guy bring out, you know, people from Belgium, people from Australia, people from, you know, everywhere, uh, before he even left his home, it's amazing. So, yeah, watching this is amazing. So, in years before I, had voted for Joe Biden, but I have realized that um, the Democrats is not what we're looking for this year. And I think my main reason for moving past that is the economy. Um, that's a big issue for me. Things have gotten very expensive. And as a student who's just finishing college, it's gonna be very difficult for me to you know, be able to pay for stuff, find a home. So I believe that Trump will help us all, help get taxes lower, help all prices get lower and effectively make it more affordable to buy a home. So it's the economy is your top issue. That's my main issue, but I mean, I support Trump on pretty much every issue. On every issue. Um, and I want to know if you are aware that this is a Trump rally. Okay. Um, what, 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 are you, what are you studying? I'm studying marketing. I'm currently in my MBA program. Okay, so you're looking to go into a business career. Yes. Trump is kind of a natural <laughs> fit for that. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Um, what do you say to people who are supporting Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz? What, what do you have to say to them that might change their mind? A little bit more to all the issues and. You know, I've listened to Kamala Harris. I want to do my due diligence in finding both sides. And it's clear she has no policy, no policy at all. So I encourage everyone who is a very big supporter of Kamala Harris to really listen to her and listen to what she has to say, because all I've heard is there's a tax credit. I haven't heard any policy other than that. So I would suggest they really look into the policy. If they can't find anything, Trump's got a bunch of policies. So check that out. We came out, obviously, to support Trump. You know, uh, I, I think he has the, the right mind. I think he has what our country needs. Oh, I think he has the right mind. I think he has what our country needs to move forward. Um, there's a lot of issues that needs to be addressed. And he lets it be known that there are problems and that we need to address these problems. What, what are the problems? What are the top issues for you? I mean, definitely um, immigration, obviously, uh, inflation. I mean, I know I've been to the supermarket and I'm like, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to make this work? You know, uh, $400 worth of groceries will last you, what, like two, two days yeah. in my household a few hours because I have boys. <laughs> so, you know, things like that, you know, things like that, that, that needs to be done. And um, I've been telling everyone that uh, our current uh, president and vice president are, are saying, that you know when they get in office they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that and all I have to say is you're in office right now why are these things not getting done so Trump is that change all right do you want to sure talk about where you came out <laughs> okay so I'm here also because I'm supporting Trump and we were surprised that we were able to get tickets to come in and uh, I'm supporting him for the same reasons uh, the economy is really bad we were doing so much better when he was in office. Just the gas prices alone, and oil prices to heat my home are astronomical. Um, going to the grocery store, I, I cannot believe how much I'm paying and that there's nothing in my shopping cart. Um, immigration has to be straightened out. I'm not against any immigrants coming here. My uh, income is based on them. I teach ESL to all immigrants from all over the world. So I don't care 
where they're from. I just want to make sure that they are here for the right reasons, that they are not here to infiltrate our country and they're not using me to learn the language so they can infiltrate the country. Um, I've met a lot of extremely nice people through my job, people who are motivated to become citizens and they're doing great things right now with what they are learning from me and from the school I work with. And you know, Trump, Trump can't be bought. Yes, does he, does he speak um, sometimes without thinking? Of course he does. He's a New Yorker. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's what we love about him. Exactly. This is, this is, he's not the typical uh, politician, politician who's that's lying to your face, right. saying they're going to do this and then turn around behind the closed door right. and do something else. So he's very blunt. And, you know, when you have someone who's really honest, you're going to hear some things that you might not want to hear. Exactly. exactly. You know, just like kids. He kids. shoots from the hip. He yes. doesn't care what he says. Yeah. Um, does not speak eloquently he's not a politician there's no rhetoric you're not hearing him say something and you're like wait didn't that mean the opposite of what I asked him because they use fancy words and I don't understand what they may or may not be saying where Trump doesn't he tells it like it is and that's what I like about him and Christine said this earlier that you know Trump has his own stability his own money exactly okay so let me just be blunt he has his own money so he's not going to be able to be bought out by by anyone right for, special interests for special interests or anything like that yeah so that that's great to have yeah exactly so we know he's really looking out for us what person takes their entire paycheck and donates it he does he never he has not taken his pay as being a president of the United States. He donates it, he doesn't need it. And and who, after having attempts on his life, is still trying yes. to work for us. Absolutely. You know? I think this is bigger than this is bigger than him. This is bigger than us. Yeah. He just understands and sees where our country is heading. And someone has to stand up. And yeah. that's amazing that he's he said it has to be him and we all we have to do is support him, which yes. we will. And he has a great relationship with all the other heads of uh, the different countries around the world. And that's what we need. Somebody that's going to stand up to them. Yeah. And he has proven that he has stood up to them. Where our administration now does not stand up to these heads of the other countries, the other world powers. What, what do you think is your strongest argument for people who are undecided, who are independent, or maybe who are voting the other way? How, maybe you know people in your life like that. How do you, what, what is the argument that you make to them? Stay off of Facebook. Don't get your information from Facebook. Do your own research. Stop talking about what everybody else is speaking about negatively until you do some research. I personally listen to Newsmax. They tell it like it is. They have been honest about Trump. They also put anything up that Biden has done great. They report on that as well. They don't hide anything where all these other news channels, if Trump does something good, you don't hear about it. Where Newsmax tells you both sides, honestly. I guess I would say, like I said, the current administration if they were going to do all these great things, they would have done it by now. So it, it, I, I think it's just, it would be foolish to put somebody else in office again that has already proven that it, it hasn't worked. So that, that's what I would tell. And yes, definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of fake news. You know, Trump says that loosely, and I myself was one of the ones that's like, what, fake news, fake news? But it really does exist. The, you know, the, so the media, they, whoever they want, that's who they, that, I don't know how, how to say this, but like that's, that's what they go, uh, that's what they, they put out there. That's who they, they, you know, they'll speak negatively on the other person. They're not, they're not telling how it really is. And as the media, as you, I think they have a um, responsibility. Come back. Come back. They have responsibility.
responsibility Get to. Your truck. <laughs> they, they have a responsibility to share information, not opinion. And a lot of play, um, right. a lot of news sources that that's what they do. They just um, sell us their opinion, not what's really going on or what's really happening. Exactly. You know, I want to say that coming out to this event, um, I didn't expect all of this. And I hope that when I go home today on social media, that they are, you know, speaking of what's really going on here. Like there's there's no hostility, there's no anger, there's different backgrounds. You know, I've seen Asian American, I've, I've seen so many different groups yes. of people coming together and we're all here for one person. So I hope social media and, and the news is are, are gonna, you know, speak positive on that and, and, and not all the other negative things that they might try to bring up. Right. You, this is the first time you've been to one of these? Yes. yes. Okay. And we yes. just met here. Yes. We don't know each we other. We don't even know each other. Yes. And we sat here and talked. And we just, we, we uh, shared phone numbers yes. and everything. So keep in touch. When we win the uh, election, we're going to celebrate. Yes. <laughs> so I just came out here to support Trump as he came out here. New York has to flip. It has to go to red. This is a big election for all Americans, no matter what side you are, no matter what race, no religion. This is something for all Americans that we all need to have people come out and vote. And okay, what, what are the top issues for you? The country just have the economy. Everyone has been decreasing in, with money. No one's been, everyone's been going on different housing. People have been coming into the country illegally, taking over stuff that people worked very hard for over these last years. You seem on the young side. <laughs> yes, I'm on the young side, yeah. Okay, so you're you're still a student? Yes, I am 15 years old. I just live on the south shore of Long Island. I have come from where many people have um, are red in my, in my area. They um, are very, very red. Uh, if you live, go by on Sunrise Highway, there's a lot of Trump supporters. On Thursdays, they are very patriotic. Do you know a lot of people your age who are supporting Trump? They do support Trump, but they're not as big as I am on it. They like to keep it hidden, but they want to still show support. I have a couple friends here now that are around my age that are here supporting them with this family. Okay. Do you know, um, do, do they have the same kinds of concerns that you were just expressing? I think they do in a way because they also want to have a good life as all of us have lived through. They, I know that their adults are looking down on them, wanting to have a good career with them, good education career, having their good money system coming in and good economy. Are you able to have um, a conversation with other kids who are supporting um, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz? In school, there's different people that like to talk about Kamala and Biden. They think that Donald Trump is a dictator over, they think that they want to have a better democracy, but they are mainly saying that he's a dictator like Putin is, but I can't think he is. But Trump just knows everything well, and he speaks very well and talks on very good topics, very important topics that everyone needs to know about. All right. Any, any last thing you'd like to say to the New Yorkers? Just go out. New York is a very blue state just because of New York City. We all know Long Island is a red state, red area, but we need to have New York change to be red. It's been blue for a very long time. We need this right here in Long Island is a very good place to come. I know I think that when Trump came for the 9-11, everyone wanted him to come to Long Island. So him coming back after since 2017 is a very big moment, moment for all of New Yorkers. So why did you come out today? Hi, Ed Foreman from Donald Trump. We came today to peacefully and patriotically support the process, basically. Uh, did you did you vote for him before? Is this your yeah. first time? Okay. What are the top issues for you? Um, issues immigration, drug prices, crime in our cities, price of food, the people we have in office now. Were we better off four years ago? For the last four years? And what can the politicians do in office right now that they're part that they're promising to do once they get elected. So any of the issues that you mentioned, how are those affecting you personally? 
Well, I see my small town on Long Island, a few surrounding it, starting to have migrants in it by the train station. So I know someone that's homeless used to live in my neighborhood. So it's becoming very dangerous. That's the migrant problem. You see food prices are increasing. Of course, gas has increased. Everything's going up. So, um, you know, some people think that uh, migrants are a good thing because we need uh, labor and a lot of them are just looking for work and uh, most of them are not, um, you know, dangerous people. What, what do you think about that point of view? Well, why would you say most of them aren't dangerous people? We don't know them. Uh, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to back it to two, two policemen. Thank you. So, you know, with any, any population, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, but countries like Ecuador that are after their jails and mental hospitals. Uh, if you want to come over, do it legally. It's much too simple, I guess. I don't want my interviewer to get damaged. She's very nice. Uh, yes, and you know, the cities can't, the cities can't handle it. There's a uh, thought that it's being done for voting. Uh, give someone everything and they'll vote for you. Interesting. For people who are uh, voting for Harris, what, what do you say to them? Uh, what, maybe independents, people who are still have an open mind about it. What would you tell them to change their mind? Well, big thing with me, I'm a scientist, and I look at all the information. I'm a centrist. I stand in the middle and look at both sides. What you want to do is listen to audio what someone says in the past, and also video, and not just a clip. You want to look at a whole session of what the person's saying and see if they kept that same point of view through their whole political career, and if not, why did they change? You don't want to flip-flop. You know, we can be uh, different people in front of different people, but the best thing is to be real, always yourself. All right, anything, uh, anything else that you think New Yorkers who are not supporting Trump should know? Not supporting Trump. Well, let's see. I, years ago, before he was running for anything, I heard a man of color who was a priest on a radio station. They were interviewing him, and he said they were having a big meeting in Trump Tower. A large consortium of black, black uh, ministers and uh, Yankee Doodle Dandies coming to help us also. So, and Trump walked past the room and he came in and said, "Can I come in?" And what he thought about the country, and it's the same feelings that he has right now. And this is way before the election. This just happened to be someone on a radio station that was being interviewed for no particular reason. He brought the subject up. All right, thank you for coming.